found it. I found the spider. La señora lo encontró. Lo encontró. So much power. <laughs> I don't... Look at the scene. You can find two people sitting over there and then two other people standing before Constance Webb staring at the mystical spider. And then this guy Ezekiel shoots at the head of one guy but shoots at the right chest of the other guy instead of going for the left side. In the meanwhile, you can notice two other guys sitting on the desk previously are running away from that place. One headshot, one injury and two eyewitnesses left alive. Such a fantastic job. Bravo. And then there's another mistake. This guy shoots the man twice in a row. But you can already find two injury spots even before you can get to hear the sound of the second shot. This dude literally got shot again even before the second bullet was fired. I can't even fold it. It's like cardboard. Cassie was gifted a Thanksgiving drawing by the stepbrother of Julia for saving their mom. After taking it, Cassie goes to say that she cannot fold that thing into her pocket because it's made of cardboard. And now you can see her taking out the same cardboard from her pocket and unfolding it. What the hell? Look closely and you can find a scratch on the right chest of Ezekiel. How the hell on earth did he get that injury? I guess he got a scratch by the sharp edges of a broken Lego brick when he was building his empire. Who are you? Look look, Ezekiel tilted to the left side even before he was hit by the weapon of Anya. Now just don't tell me in the comment section that the weapon of Anya has a mysterious shockwave which influenced the position of Ezekiel even before he got hit by the weapon. You can again get to see Anya throwing her weapon to the face of Ezekiel but right in the next frame he was not hit by the weapon of Anya at all. Where the hell did the weapon vanish then? I guess the device went outside to find out the missing brain of the script writer as well as the producers of the movie. It's a curse. Look at this. The bedroom doesn't have any railing on the corner. No protection at all. Let's say that our Spider-Man can jump like a monkey from the bedroom to the ground. But what about a guest who might come over here and fall onto the ground by mistake? No protection at all? You guys, we've seen this a hundred times. It was cardiac arrest. When your heart starts back up again, you're fine. This dude beside Cassie was watching the plate and yet some food fell off from the side of the ladder. Wasting food is not a good thing. She chose to be like way deep in the Amazon for the last month of her pregnancy. I always thought my mom didn't care about me. In the movie, it was portrayed that Madam Webb used to blame her mother for her misfortune and premature death until she got to find out exactly what happened to her using the web. But something is wrong over here. Let's say that the Las Uranias people buried the dead body of Constance Webb in the jungle and Cassie was given to an orphanage during her childhood. Don't you think that the authority of her orphanage in America knows about her situation including the cause of her mother's death and the Las Uranias people? She also has the personal diary as well as many photographs and research archives of her mother. Even after all of this, she literally had no idea on why her mother went to the Amazon forest and exactly how she died. Jesus Christ. Any guy with even a conversational level of knowledge in physics can understand that this truck in the back was not running faster than 25 miles an hour. And you know what? A crashing car can only cause fatality if the speed was at least 60 miles per hour when you are sitting in a motionless car. And yet, the chances of your death is still going to be 50%. If the approaching car was running over 120 miles per hour, only then you have a 99.99% .99 chances of death. And yet, O'Neill couldn't manage to survive this simple crash. What the hell was he made of? Candle wax? Even if the head or neck of that man was injured, I would still believe but look at this. He has a bloody injury on his chest. Exactly what kind of thing hit the chest of this man? The driving wheel? Now just don't tell me in the comment box that the driving wheel of his ambulance had a lot of nails being hammered by this man. And by the way, if some of you believe that the injury on his chest was the result of broken glasses, let me show you this. You see that? There was a crack in the glass but nothing broke down. What the hell is wrong with this guy? I have seen him choking people for more than six times in the entire movie. I guess this guy signed up for the wrong kind of movie. Perhaps he should take an appointment with this man. This doctor can be his best choking partner, you know?
Wait, wait, wait. Something is wrong over here. Look at the distance between Ezekiel and the female police officer. She could have shot at least two bullets to the face of Ezekiel even before he got close to her. Instead, she lifted her hand above in the thin air so that Ezekiel cannot get hold of the gun. She needed to realize that a walking, jumping monkey man does not need a gun to take down such an imbecile like her. Is it not weird that there was a pry bar below the vehicle exactly when Cassie needed to pull off the number plate of the taxi? Why almost everything in this movie is so convenient for the stupid storyline? I hope I have cherry pie. Wait, what is Optimus Prime doing over here? I'll be back as soon as I can. Thank you, Ben. You didn't ask for any of this. Okay, well, neither did you. This woman literally stole a taxi in the middle of the broad daylight in New York City, and yet she is not wanted with theft charges, and then she also has been able to move out of the United States to go to the Amazon forest for solving the mystery of her mother's death. Such an amazing bullshit. She looks as if she was able to see the future of the MCU and Sony and how much embarrassed they're going to be with one of the biggest pieces of dog shit they would ever create. Ezekiel in the vision of Cassie throws an explosive onto their car and you can notice clearly that it bounces on the windscreen and then rolls down on the hood. But right in the next frame you can clearly see nothing on the hood of that car. And then you can see a flare bursting out from the interior of the vehicle which is impossible because the explosive couldn't even get inside the car. By the way, who is this guy on the billboard? What is he trying to do? He wanna show the power of his King Cobra to us? Well, I'm very eager to watch some action of his King Cobra. At least it would be better than watching this dog shit movie. Inside the vision of Cassie, Ezekiel threw the explosive into the vehicle and killed them all in less than two seconds. But over here, as you can see, this dude was slowly and slowly activating his grenade before throwing that into their vehicle. What a bloody retard. I can bet it that this man behind him can do more daring action with this King Cobra than all the characters in this movie combined. Another idiotic mistake. He could have simply thrown the explosive near the car and jump right away. It would take less than a second. And yet he jumped away with the activated grenade in his hand. Such a genius man he is. Another compelling reason to believe that he actually built an empire of Lego bricks. When Ezekiel was catwalking out of fire, you can still see the smoke from the exhaust pipe of the ambulance. But right in the next frame, the ambulance was millions of light years away from them. Was the ambulance also high on something just like the director of this movie? Wait, something is wrong over here. How can a firecracker have the power to make such a big hole on a brick wall and then literally fail to cause any damage to that piece of tin in the hand of Cassie? It seems more like the physics law in this movie has been tailored to be convenient for the storyline only. Wait, how the hell on earth those sharp edgy pieces of metal literally flew into the tin wall? How can they fly off so violently just from the explosion made by some freaking firecrackers? Something is fishy over here, you know? Whoever's property this was, I can pretty much tell you one thing that the owner is gonna have a hard time explaining this issue to the insurance company. Instead of finishing her off right away, this dude is catwalking again on the railing. How can a sluggish retard like him build an empire made of Lego bricks? I can see you. Standing up for what you believe. Alright guys, a lot of people are saying that this scene was a straight up copy paste from the 2004 Spider-Man 2. But I have another theory in mind. In Doctor Strange 2, you can see a black female who was depicted to be Captain Marvel. So based on this illustration, can we also say that in the Madam Web universe, Anya was the Spider-Woman in the New York City instead of Peter Parker? But what about the two other girls? Can I say that the two other girls are playing the equivalent role of the other two Spider-Men? 
we saw in the Spider-Verse? It still doesn't make any sense to me, you know? Maybe the best answer would be saying that the writers didn't give a f*** about the storyline authenticity. Overall, I have to tell you one thing that the dialogue in this movie are so cringe I literally had to order 500 liters of bath water, I mean holy water, added some more holy water in it and then had to rinse my whole brain for over a week. If Stan Lee was alive, he would never stand this movie and he would die again. My mother always cut the crusts off my sandwiches. My mom said the crusts would make my hair go curly. It was years before I figured that one out. 